I cannot fall asleep, but when I do fall asleep, I can sleep for a very long period of time. That makes me think of some degree of sleep onset insomnia, like they're not able to fall asleep quickly, but once they do, they can stay asleep. The more common reason is something like a circadian rhythm disorder, where their body clock is a little bit delayed. So getting some idea on what time they go to bed and they wake up gives us some insight. To get even more details, it's always a good idea to ask, because people who have delayed sleep phase, they may get into bed say 10 they can't fall asleep until midnight and then they have to wake up at 5 or 6 a.m and then they're sleep deprived on the weekends delayed sleep phase is one thing that comes to mind the other thing that one can do to get a better understanding is have them maintain a sleep diary many times patients will only think of the time where they are catching up on sleep but that is all rebound sleep so if you look at someone's sleep diary you can actually then start looking to see that the average number of hours slept across two weeks is perhaps eight hours then it doesn't feel as pathologic as somebody saying that I need to sleep 12 hours, but that's actually just catching up on sleep. People who need more sleep, that's called idiopathic hypersomnia. So that's a central disorder of hypersomnolence. That could be the underlying problem. It's not very common. Idiopathic hypersomnia is less than a few percent of all people who have excessive daytime sleep. They don't have sleep apnea, insomnia. Biologically speaking, they just have a longer sleep need, and that can be managed with stimulus during the day. But again, having a sleep test is the first step. Even if somebody is considering idiopathic hypersomnia, they should have an in-lab study followed by what's called an MSLT. That's a nap test during the day where you give somebody five opportunities to take naps during the day and you measure how quickly do they actually fall asleep.